The Boy Who Invented Numbers Chapter 8 Saving Sick Sam Pilk knew he had to come up with a way to rescue a sick, helpless man stuck in a hole under a heavy branch with a hungry bear about to wake up at any moment. This was going to be the biggest test of his life and he wasn't sure he was up to it. Pilk looked down at the hole, then up at the branches above scratched his head and stroked his slightly hairy chin. I think I've got an idea, he finally announced. It's going to take all of our strength, your bow and arrow, and this. He reached into his bag and pulled out a ball of twine and a long length of rope. What do we do with those? Fiona asked, looking puzzled. Well, I'm going to tie the rope to the twine and then the twine to your arrow like this. And he showed her what he meant. Now, I just need you to shoot the arrow over that big tree branch high up there above the hole. Do you think you can do it? Looks pretty tricky, Fiona said nervously. I might need more than one go. I don't know anyone better than you with a bow and arrow, Pilk reassured truthfully. Fiona stood under the tree, lifted up her bow and took aim. She let the arrow go and it soared through the air. At first it looked like the perfect shot, but then the twine snagged and the arrow stopped just short of the branch and fell to the ground. Oh no, Pilk cried, I was sure that was going over. I think the twine caught on something, Fiona said. I'm going to lay it out better so it doesn't catch again. Good idea, Pilk said. Fiena laid the twine out in large loose circles on the forest floor, held up the arrow to feel the weight and then stood and lined up her bow once more. If you can't do this, then nobody can, Pilk said. Just say these words. I can do this. I believe in myself. I've got this. OK, I'll try, Fiona said, took aim and repeated Pilk's words. I can do this. I believe in myself. I've got this. At last, she let go of the arrow, which this time appeared to be going far too high. But then it dipped and fell just the other side of the branch. She had done it. Wow, that was amazing, Pilk cried, punching the air. How did you know the arrow was going to do that? Fiena blushed slightly. I just sort of drew a picture in my head and it seemed to work, she said. Excuse me, Sam's voice drifted up from below. Can I just inform you that the bear has woken up and it's looking straight at me? I think it wants the rest of the honey. Oh no, Fiena squealed. Pilk thought quickly again. Sam, did I hear you just say you had more honey with you? He called out. Yes, I have, Sam replied. I carry smaller pots because of my bad shoulders. Pass up the pot quick, Pilk said. I'm going to try to keep the bear busy. Sam handed up the honey and Pilk dribbled some of it onto the branch above the bear's head. The bear made a peculiar, surprised growl as the honey dripped onto its snout. What's the bear doing, Sam? Pilk called out. It's trying to lick something off its snout, Sam answered. Perfect, it's working, Pilk said happily. I'm trying to lure the bear out of the hole. Oh, how clever, Fiona said. I never would have thought of that. Well, knowing what my enemy wants has got me out of a few tricky situations recently. Pilk said. Brains instead of brawn, Fiona suggested. If you're calling me the smartest guy around, Pilk replied, then who am I to disagree? Fiona just smiled and watched as Pilk continued to tempt the bear out of the hole. Here you are, bearsy wearsy, Pilk chanted, and he waved the honey pot around where the bear could see it. Come and get your lovely honey. 
I think the bear is about to leap up out of the hole, Sam called up. Oh, this is it then. Pilk quickly made a honey trail on the ground and dropped the honey a short distance from the hole and then ran over to the rope hanging from the tree. Sam, Pilk called down, as soon as the bear is out of the hole, I'm going to pass the rope down to you and I will need you to pass it back up the other side of the branch as quickly as you can. I'll do my best, Sam replied. Just then, with an almighty roar, the bear burst out of the hole, scattering twigs everywhere. It turned to Pilk and roared ferociously at him. Pilk felt its hot breath on his face and he scrunched his eyes tight, waiting to be torn into tiny shreds. But nothing happened. When he opened his eyes again, he saw the bear behind him with its muzzle deep in the pot of honey. Thank my lucky stars, Pilk sighed in relief. Quick, Sam, take the rope and pass it back up. We'll need to do it a few times so it's strong enough. Sam did as he was told and, working together, all three of them managed to loop the rope around the tree and the fallen branch three times. That should be enough, Pilk said. Now, while the bear's still busy, pull the rope as hard as you can. With luck, we should be able to lift the branch high enough to get Sam out. Let me know when, Fiona replied, leaning hard on her end of the rope. Pull as soon as I say, uh, Pilk remembered the fruit symbols from earlier that day. One for the ape, two for Tufa, and three for Evie. Pull! They both pulled the rope as hard as they could and the branch lifted just enough to prove that Pilk's ingenious idea actually worked. Again, shouted Pilk, one, two, three, pull! They kept pulling until Pilk was sure it was high enough to free Sam. Now, tie your rope around the tree behind you, Pilk called out. I'll do the same here. They tied the ropes rushed back to the hole, and Fiena called down. Sam, do you think you can climb out now? But there was no answer. Let me have a look, Pilk said, and he stuck his head down inside the hole. Oh no, I think he's passed out. I'm going to have to go down there and help him out. What? Fiena cried out, shocked. Is it safe? Probably not, Pilk replied bravely, but he can't get himself out so I'm going to have to do it. Before Fiona had time to argue, Pilk had slipped into the hole, saying, Give my love to Tufa and Evie if I don't make it back. Fiona had never been as scared or as proud of Pilk as she was at that very moment. How is he, Pilk? Fiona finally called out after a few unbearable moments of silence. I think he's still alive. Pilk called back, but it's difficult to tell with this guy. He looks like a half-dead skeleton anyway. See if you can find some rope, and maybe we can pull him out. Fiona noticed some spare rope hanging from her end by the tree, so she pulled out a sharp-edged stone out of her little bag, cut off a reasonable length of rope, and handed it down to Pilk. Thanks, Pilk called back. I put my shoulder bag around him, so I'll tie the rope to it and we'll try and pull him out together. After a bit of heaving and straining, they finally managed to pull Sam out and onto the forest floor. Pilk sprang out of the hole with hardly any effort at all. Oh, look at the poor man, Fiona said pitifully. He's all skin and bone and he's bruised all over. We must get him back to the village soon. I could try carrying him, Pilk offered but I don't think I'll make it all the way back. Hmm, I've got an idea, Fiona said. I'll need your rope and a couple of long branches. Well, we'd better be quick, Pilk said. That bear's finished the honey. The bear dropped the empty pot, whimpered and began licking the trail of honey, trying to gather up the last of it. Fiona quickly found two long branches and stripped away some of the side twigs, while Pilk recovered his rope from the branches. 
I'm going to need you to hold the branches steady, about shoulder distance apart, Fiona instructed, and Pilt marvelled as her hands moved like lightning, winding the rope around and between the two long sticks. In almost no time at all, she had created a sort of woven mat that looked strong enough to carry a man, or at least someone like Sam. That is the neatest thing I think I've ever seen, Pilk said with genuine admiration. Thanks, Vienna said, but there's no time to waste. Help me put Sam on it. They gently lifted Sam onto the makeshift stretcher and Pilk put his shoulder bag under Sam's head as a soft pillow. The bear growled unhappily and they watched in petrified fascination as it followed the honey trail back to the hole. Then the creature began licking the branch where Pilk had dripped honey on it earlier and it stretched itself further and further until its whole weight was on the branch. Then with a mighty crack the branch broke and the bear tumbled back down into the hole. They heard the bear mewling more in surprise than in pain they thought. Quick now's our chance Pilk shouted. Let's get out of here before the bear works out how to get out of the hole again. They scuttled away as quickly as their legs could carry them and kept on running until finally they saw one of Pilk's path markers and knew they were not far from their village. There was an almighty roar behind them and they guessed the bear had got itself out of the hole but they did not stop to see if it was heading their way. After what felt like ages, they finally reached the clearing at the edge of their village. They gently laid Sam's stretcher down and slumped on the ground, more exhausted than they had ever been in their lives before. There was no sign of the bear, and they were pretty sure it couldn't follow them this far. We've done it, Pilk said, in between great gasping breaths. I have never been so scared in all my life. Fiena managed to grasp a few breaths and said, You were brilliant. I couldn't have done it if you hadn't have been there. Come on, you were brilliant too, Pilk replied honestly, getting his breath back. I know I thought of using the rope and the honey, but you shot the arrow over the branch and you made that amazing basket carrying thing. That was only basket weaving. Fiona replied, blushing slightly. Yes, maybe, Pilk said, but the point is, you came up with it at exactly the time we needed it. That's pure genius. Fiona smiled sweetly and looked down at her feet, slightly embarrassed. It's you, she said softly, after a short moment without looking up. I have most of my good ideas when you're around. You show me things and you encourage me and you give me belief in myself. Pilk struggled for what to say to her, and he felt a little awkward, like he had before. But then he realised they had just come through one of the most terrifying experiences together. He decided that now was the right time to tell Fiona exactly how he felt about her. Look, Fiona, he said gently, lifting her chin and looking straight into her eyes. You are the most intelligent and resourceful and thoughtful person that I know. No one else could have done what you did today. Fiona smiled bashfully. I trust you completely, he continued, and I know that everything will go well and I'll survive if I've got you around. Pilk could swear that Fiona had a tear in her eye. I think... That's the kindest thing that you've ever said to me, she said. And I believe I can do anything if I've got you. Then, to his utter surprise, Fiena kissed him gently on the nose and then quickly jumped up, giggling. You're not quite as Neanderthal as I thought, she said, picking up one end of the stretcher. Come on, let's get Sam over to Nina straight away. He's at death's door and no more funny comments. Pilk just stood in a frozen daze while his brain did all kinds of funny flips and cartwheels. He felt a funny mix of happy, proud and elated all at the same time. 
I can do anything, Pilk repeated Fianna's words with a soppy grin on his face. If I've got you. Pilk, are you all right? Fianna said. What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing, Pilk replied, feeling strangely floaty and lighter than normal. I was just uh, thinking about what you said. Well, snap out of it for now, Fianna said. We can talk about it later, after we get Sam well again. Pilk resisted the temptation to say he didn't think Sam would ever get better again, as he didn't want to spoil the magic of the moment. Oh, Sam groaned as he came around again. I really don't feel very well at all. That's all right, Sam, Fianna reassured him. We're safely back at the village now. Nina will make you better, I promise. Oh, thank you, Sam said weakly. Both of you for saving my life. I don't know how to repay you. Then he passed out again. Come on, Pilk. Fianna said with concern, but smiling at him. Let's get Sam over to Nina. Pilk now finally understood that by simply telling Fianna how he felt about her and their relationship, he had unlocked something between them, and he had a feeling that their friendship might last a very long time. Which it did. For ages. Well, a stone age at least. <laughs> 